The plan remains. We're attacking our opponents with creatures that are awkward to block. We've got Menace, we've got First Strike, we've got Death Touch, we've got Flying. Even our lands have Menace and Flying. Let's go. Tolentino. Let's see, we go first, but we have no white mana. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty good. I'm happy we're going first. Um, yeah, let's play the Snarl and reveal the planes. Get Valentin going here. sure exactly what these colors mean for us. <laughs> I'm still not sure what these colors mean for us. But we're just going to stick to the plan. Okay. So this is fine, I think. They could... Yeah, we're just going to put them all on the Aspirant here. Pump Valentin, and then they just... They have no good blocks. One nice thing about Valentin is that he shuts down Shambling Guests and uh, the Eye Twitch from making treasures, killing things, or learning. That's just a lot of life gain for them now. I think the plan remains, though. Eventually, they might have to just start chomping here. We'll see. Still no blocks. Let's see what's in their hands, see if we can remove something big. Skeletal Swarm, Immer Stern. What's bad for us here? I think Skeletal Swarm is just too slow. The Chariot... Chariot's annoying because it makes blockers for Valentin, but I think the Predator here is our take because it flies, so... I think we can just win in the air given what we're seeing here. I guess they gain four if they play the chariot. So we don't have lethal. They can play the chariot and survive another turn. It would be nice. Well, I was going to say it would be nice to get rid of the innkeepers, but there's not much we can do there. Ooh, does that give us the win? If everything flies, that's 7, 10, 13. Yeah, that's just the win right there. Flying and don't really care. Let's fly. We'll draw a card. All right. Everything went according to plan. Okay, we've got three lands and some stuff to do. Our opponent took a mulligan and we're going first, so that's a good sign, I think. Well, good sign for us. All right, Luminarch here is just better on turn two than our core wizards.
The eye twitch is really tempting to vanishing verse because they don't get to learn. But I'm not sure that's worth the vanishing verse. I wonder why they had to think about that block. Okay, I will bolt this in and play Spellbinder here. Wow. Okay, so they've got two counter spells here. Creature removal, Onyx. I think we just take the top end. Now, we didn't see Blood on the Snow last turn. Doesn't mean they don't have it now, of course. But I think I'm going to double Wizard here. Because that way, if they bounce something or remove something, it's less painful for us. And if they spend a whole turn digging for a Sweeper, then we'll play another Spellbinder. Are they going to bounce something? So I think we just play Spellbinder number two. Okay, Pest Summoning, but those Pests are never going to be blocking anything. I think if they did draw, I mean, they're still only on four land, but if they did draw any kind of sweeping removal, we'll get rid of it here. Yes, like that. Well, that went well. But I think that's just aggro going first against control. Okay, we go first again. No white mana, no two drops, just a chop end here, so that's no good. We've been pretty lucky with the mulligans where our sixes are pretty good, even when the sevens aren't that great. So... Seems like all we've been running into the last few days has just been control decks. Really haven't seen much of any aggro decks against us. Go through the tomb, of course. Now it's unfortunate because they could play crush the weak here and just wipe us. So I think I'm actually going to hold on to the Paladin, even though these two 1-1s one -ones are not that threatening. The These colors have a lot of sweepers. And even though they're 1-1s, one the Triumphant Adventure is it's kind of hitting for three a turn here, unless they discard a card and start sacrificing lands. So... Kind of like we're hitting them for four a turn or a card. And keeping our control opponent off cards here is just good for us. Still gonna hold back.
Galazeth for Zmari. This is just a decent example here of how we're not really afraid of the, the dragons and the defenders that these guys play. So let's see if they sacrifice the treasure. Probably don't want to. And they're just sacrificing the dragon here to prevent some damage. Yeah. So opponent's got five, potentially six mana. They play their dragon and they do choose to attack. Which I think is fine. Let's see, if we complete the dungeon here, I think that's pretty good. Um, tempted to play more creatures, but I think, I think we're hitting them for enough with these creatures that we have. That we've got them on a two turn clock here. suppose, you know, they could play a lot of all runs epiphanies here and just take a lot of swings with this dragon. And they still could. They still have seven mana after this expressive iteration. Okay, the question is really how many of those have they found at this point? Did they find another one? They can hit us for 10, so it's quite close. Oh no, they can't, because we're going to block with our 4-4. Four four. They go in with everything. So what's their plan? No plan. Okay. That Tomb of Annihilation won us the game there. Yeah, the Triumphant Adventure looks like a 1-1, one, one, but if you don't deal with it, it just ends up draining so much life. And then at the end of the day, bringing out a big finisher. Okay, we go first. We've got mana and plays, so that's what we're looking for. Job for a cowboy. An interesting name. More blue mana. What is Valentin doing in this art? It looks like he's he's taken apart a skeleton. No, not my Luminarch. That's so rude. This isn't great for us. We kind of want to have more pressure on the board than a 2-2. The Vanishing Verses are not particularly useful against this deck. Ah, that's rough. That's a good pickup, though. Back 
back into the tomb for us. I think I really like the art for Nadar. I really want to know what kind of sword he's wielding. Cody? Can't cast permanent spells. I feel like I can't let that live. And I might as well just bring back the Luminarch here. The left side of the Tomb of Annihilation is symmetrical, and the right side is just not. The right side is... you have to really want a 4-4 token to go through the right side. Chose to discard Elrond's Epiphany. Oh, they're just out. That Cody just seemed like an all-in. Please don't remove this. Okay, there's a few... There's a few decks where this is the play. This could be the Simiac Ramp deck. Okay, it's almost surely the Simiac Ramp, ramp deck at this point. Do I want to put a counter on an Elite Spellbinder? No, I think I want them to sacrifice the Dryad and just... Not even give them the chance to have a 2-mana counter spell. I'm not sure if this deck plays 2-mana counter spells. I wonder if playing the Maul there was correct and just hitting them for 5. But I think developing a little bit more of the board first is probably better. Wow. Okay. So they're going to field trip next turn. I think we can just delete all runs from the game here, and then the next Spellbinder can get rid of Mordenkayan for us. And we're not that scared of their giant wizard. We have a lot of enter the battlefield type effects that we're happy to play again. Okay, so next turn they're on six mana and they're on Mordecai and mana and then the following turn they can play their wizard. Unfortunately, we don't have any wizards of our own right now. Mordenkayan, do we care if they play that? Draw cards, create a dog. The dog really isn't that scary. We could hit them for 9 this turn, and then 10 the next. If we draw a land, we'd kill them. Let's just take Mordenkayan from them. Although it, it might be correct to take the wizard there. Because, well, they're not going to be able to play the wizard this turn. And then we're going to hit them for 11. And then even if they play the wizard, uh, well, they just gain two. So they'll be on four. A land would have been nice to go in with the hive there. So let's see. Four, eight, three, eleven... Uh, well, I think the Maul pushes more damage here. So if they play the Wizard, an untapped land off the top wins the game for us. If we don't get that untapped land... I guess we spellbind and take more cards from them. Oh, there it is. Sorry, you can't block this.
another benefit of playing aggro is the games are just so fast. You don't have to go through these 20 minute slogs. Did our opponent just mulligan three times? Two one land hands in a row. Do you keep one land and four two drops? You don't. That's still a bad keep. Oh, this is going to be a rough game. Okay. I don't think we even have a way to shuffle the deck, so putting both of these on the bottom is kind of sad. That's very nice, though. Something to do on turn two. I mean, this deck does have a lot to do on turn two, but... That could be the difference between uh, staying in this game and just completely getting blown out here by our green friend. I think we bolt this in. Take a look at our opponent's hand. Light blade. Choose your weapon. Deal damage to a creature with flying. Double a creature's power and toughness. Old growth troll. Hmm. Not sure what the bigger threat here is. Guess I'll take the troll. Vanishing Verse deals with the troll very nicely, and if I had a Vanishing Verse in my hand, probably would have taken the Mammoth. So they want to play the, the Pack Leader and the Death Toucher. Over the Mammoth. Yeah, I'm not going to block that. I think we're in a race here. Is Valentine worth slowing down for? So they can deal 5 damage to a creature with flying, but we can get Luminarch to 6 health pretty quickly. I think we do that. They will get to draw a card with the wolf next turn. But unless they find something with reach, they're just dead next turn. I guess they can spend the mana and the time to... No, they're still dead, even with another maul. They're not playing the snow version of Mono Green, so I'm not sure what version this is. Let's see, did they kill the Spellbinder, or did they go for the Mammoth? Neither. Okay, so if their plan is to simply kill the Spellbinder with Choose Your Weapon, then we put another Maul on the Luminarch, right? And then if they have something that can instant speed do 6 damage to Luminarch, I guess we're very sad. They don't. Hey, we got a number. Nice round one, too. I feel like there's this weird phenomenon where when you're fighting through the diamond ranks to get to Mythic, everyone is playing net decks, they're playing the meta. And then as soon as you hit Mythic, you just hit a bunch of people playing experimental things. Just kind of off meta. I guess since you can't fall out of Mythic, why not, right? Or maybe I'm just not up to speed with what the meta is. Maybe that's the new mono green. 
Shambling gas, once again, we just don't care about. Especially with Valentin in play, just turns off Shambling gas for us. Although we missed the third land, that's not fun. Let's see if they double block here. Do they know about the Valentin mechanic? Yeah. So do we play Forsworn Paladin? Or do we hold up Vanishing Verse? What could they play on three mana that we would want to Vanishing Verse? Probably the Skullport Merchant. Uh, yeah, but I think the Paladin's... Paladin's worth playing out. Alright. Still no land, but they didn't leave back two blockers here, so... I think that we put a counter on Luminarch and we send the whole team. Yeah. They're probably thinking the Ghast will be able to finish off the Luminarch here. But it won't. I think I'm just going to hold up Vanishing Verse here. Okay, so this time they held back the Eye Twitch. But the only thing it can block is the Luminarch, and it's not going to get to learn. Still no third land for us. But at this point, yeah, at this point, we've got them in two turns. Once again, they're just, they're not even going to get to learn here. They get to draw some cards, I guess. And that puts them in blood in the snow mana. Which, there's nothing we can do about it at this point. They've successfully stalled to six mana. From the lack of pressure from us. Yeah. Alright, well. I guess we play the Spellbinder. And we just take their next Blood on the Snow if they have it, or their Planeswalker. Oh, they have two Planeswalkers. Fun. Let's see. I think Kaya's a lot worse for us to deal with. Look, I can't do everything. We can just exile Professor Onyx with a Vanishing Verse, but she is probably going to make us sacrifice the Spellbinder here. And unless we find a fourth land, we're not really going to be able to keep any pressure up. Watch the life essence fade. So unfortunately, they just... They just play Kaya. Yeah, it's just Planeswalker after Planeswalker here. Hopefully, they're out of stuff. And we simply put a Maul on Dar and win the game. I guess they can play Hunt for Specimens. No, they don't have enough black mana. They can't play the uh, Exile target creature. Ghosting feels weird. That's unfortunate, though. An eye twitch every turn. Wow, our draws have not been very nice to us this game. I mean, I guess we attack Kaya. They're just probably... I mean, they're not going to exile. They're just going to keep blocking with the eye twitch and learning. I don't even think it matters. They're just going to block, so... Threaten Kaya, but it's not much of a threat.
A blood on the snow before a ghost form counter is a very weird decision. Oh, I guess it's not that weird. Well, I think this is a lost game, if I'm honest. I think we could Vanishing Verse the Eye Twitch in response to them putting a Ghost Form counter on it. But Kaya's got enough counters that she can just exile this and Dar here. So now we probably have to exile that. I guess we will, but... Yeah, this is just... This is just too much at this point for us to handle. I'm not sure what we could draw. Well, that's... Kaya's still going to keep putting Ghost Burn counters on, but... This does get rid of Mascot Exhibition, because they did sacrifice a land earlier. So they need two lands off the top. What, did they draw removal? Oh, another Planeswalker. That's funny. Well, let's see. If we equip, attack, they can block with a single spider. If we play Nadar, I guess we can do both, so might as well. No, we can't. Equipping is four. Forgot about that. We can attack with the dragon. They can still just double block and then we lose the spellbinder. I guess we equip. And I think we go after Kaya. Kaya is just the worst problem here. Aren't I, the generous one? I think you can double up the ghost form tokens and it just makes more 1-1s. One it's bold to bargain with me. Yeah. Wow, they're playing Vanishing Verse 2. Guess that makes sense. I was really hoping they wouldn't leave that eye twitch behind. Are we just dead here? Yeah, we're just dead. We can only we can only block one of the spiders. Good game. Oh, we lost our number. Hmm. Okay. Not the best hand. Vanishing verse. It's either amazing if you're playing against mono green, or if you're playing against control, then it's a bit of a dud. So having two in our hand is either great or really bad. Did we possibly run into a mono white deck here without a one drop? Oh no, they have one drops. They're just saving them for turn two. Let's see, do they spread the counters around? I'm really tempted to play Nadar here, but I'm also tempted to get rid of the Monk of the Open Hand. Yeah, because they can double up against the Triumphant Adventurer, and then that's not great against for us, so... Let's do that, I guess. It's not... It's mana efficient. The question is, do we go through the Tomb of Annihilation? With Nadar, we can go through either of these pretty quickly. I think I'm going to go through Vandelver. I'm going to try to look for some more land as well.
The symmetrical health loss against Mono White can be pretty rough for us, especially as soon as they go wide. If we can keep them on a low creature count, then we're in a pretty good shape against them. If they have a one drop, yeah. So, if we attack with both and we pump the Forsworn, Forsworn would eat a token and Usher probably at worst. Triumph and Adventure would also do both of those, so I think. Is that worth the attack, or do we play Nadar here and start blocking their non-flyers? I think we play Nadar. And I think let's just get a goblin and start having more blockers. I think attacking with the Triumph and Adventure here and putting a 1-1 counter on it means they have to triple block it to kill it. And the third blocker cannot be the spirit. Or it wouldn't do enough. See, I think this is just an opponent that doesn't understand what they've walked into here. So now we finish this dungeon, draw a card, and everything gets plus one, plus one. That's pretty good. Do we just vanishing verse? Uh, I think we attack. I don't think we vanishing verse Rydane because we don't really care about Rydane's effects. It only shuts off two cards in our entire deck. And if they double block Nadar here because of the, the Anthem effect, then we just vanishing verse one of them in response. So if we're feeling good, we can start going through the tomb. I think we're feeling pretty good. So in that case, I think I'll just pump the goblin. We made that game against that mono white deck look way easier than the mono white matchup actually is. The mono white matchup is actually, I think, probably the worst matchup for us, especially if they're going first, because Portable Hole grabs so much of our stuff, and the Skyclave Apparition grabs the rest. Wow, they really wanted Valentin dead. I think that's just that's just fine if that's what they want to do. So unless we find a vanishing verse, that old growth troll is just gonna hit us for a lot. This is actually why we keep the plane in the hand. I didn't say it out loud, but you keep the basics as long as possible to enable the snarls. And let's see, if we play the Spellbinder and put a counter on it, I think we're okay with trading it for the troll. Especially if we can take a chariot from their hand or something. Okay, so the opponent's basically out of gas. If we block the troll, it can of course become a token, which if they have a chariot is not good for us. All this new tech in these mono green decks is kind of fun to see. I think I'm happy if they sacrifice a land to get a troll token. I'm going to go through Phandelver again here. Not feeling comfortable enough for the tune yet. Ooh, Maul is, Maul is really good against Mono Green here. 
So Mono Green's removal is all about fight spells. Which means... Let's see. They could make a... Yeah, they could make a 1-1 one, one Hydra and block. Uh, but they'd need to use the Sentinel to do that, so I guess we'll go in. Yeah, so Mono Green's removal is all about fight spells and just having their creatures be bigger. So if our creatures are bigger, we basically turn off their removal. So they have an expensive Mammoth, or they can get a 4-4 token here. I don't understand that at the end there. They manually tapped and then they just tapped out. We're going first again. We've got a one drop, a two drop, and a three drop. We've been pretty lucky with the one drops today because we're not running that many. Could it be the mirror match? Null Priest of Oblivion. Menace and Lifelink. That's neat. I'm curious if they'd want to trade for the Luminarch. I think I might be willing to take that trade. I actually don't know what they're playing. Null Priest... I mean, it could be Avro. There's no Snowlands. Curious if our opponent's about to miss a land drop here. Or if they just really wanted to play this professor. Okay, so we're sort of flooding out here. But we're still in a great position. Actually, I wonder if the hive was a mistake and if we had two untapped mana here, we'd probably turn this Professor into a 1-1 one, one token. They took the two damage, so they're feeling pretty comfortable they can deal with this board. Yeah, if our opponent gets to one, and that was because I played the Hive, then I'll be kind of sad. Oh, this is that Cleric deck. So they're going to want to turn that Cleric into a bigger Cleric. But I don't think they're going to get the chance because we're going to attack for 11 right here. And they're going to have to block. In fact, they're going to have to block... Let's see... Yeah, they're going to have to block Nadar. They're gonna lose two if they sac if they don't sacrifice an artifact or a land. Yeah, that's just the deck going to plan again. Okay, we're going first again. Let's uh let's play the snarl, but there's really no point to reveal that we have a planes. Ruin Grab. That one drops a turn late, but it's okay because we can actually play it as a give your uh, give your thunderous orator a menace. 
I don't think I've seen a successful mill deck in standard 22, so I'm not really scared of the crab. In fact, Silver Quill Command will just let us get something back. Question is, did they foretell a crush the week? I have no idea what this deck is playing. So I'm not going to play Valentin and the Core Wizard. We'll just play the one. Let's see, what did they mill? One Valentin. Let's see what they mill here. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of a two for one here. We get rid of their Ruin Crab and we get another adventure. So I think I'm okay with that. They took two, they really like their hand. So they play two hideous laughters. That was a lot of cards. And they did like their hand. Well, all we can do is stick to the plan. Let's get rid of... Uh, this is Fortel, not Flashback. Okay, let's get rid of Hideous Laughter. Make them sacrifice the land, or take two. And uh, make a 4-4. Four -four. So do they have more? Can they do that again, basically? Can they dual strike Tasha's hideous laughter again? Okay. Yeah. They just, they simply had it. And I think that's it. We're done. What, they played one expressive iteration and they found their two Tasha's that they needed. We're up against the insanity carrot. Opponent goes first, but it's a pretty good hand. So this is the mono white matchup where they get to go first. Not having a basic here is a little rough, but I think I think we'll be okay. Hopefully we draw a basic or some other land for turn three. I think we're going to need to hit our curve to stand a chance. So Valentin's lifelink can actually matter here. And they have to double block, so two for one, gain some life. It's worth it for us. They're just going to swing back for seven here. Uh, yeah, I think that's okay. Hey, look at that. We got our basic. So, Nadar gets out a body to start blocking. Valentin gets us up to 16. Nadar shuts off both Usher of the Fallen. So, I think we were going to want to do that. And uh, I'll offer to trade my Luminarch for theirs. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Um, no. I think four land is all we need here. We're looking for a removal. So I think our opponent's running out of land here. 
And they're also running out of one drops. This is just excellent for us. So we're going to go in with both here. And depending how they block, we might be able to get a Vanishing Burst combat trick. They probably really want to get rid of Valentin here. No. Okay. So I'm gonna play the core wizard and just hold up Vanishing Burst. The wizard's gonna have Menace and Life Link too here, which again it it matters. Skyclave. Okay. They probably want to take Valentin, although Nadar is a pretty big threat as well. They're attacking for three. I think we could Vanishing Verse that, but... Eh, it's fine. Now, if we get rid of the Skyclave... Let's see, is that worth getting rid of? I don't think so. Ooh, another Luminarch here. So let's play Valentin. And I think we'll do the same plan as last turn with Vanishing Verse Combat Trick here. Thunderous, Thunderous Core Wizard here gets us some lifelink. Put a 1-1 counter on... Hmm. I think on Nadar. Yeah, he's got Menace, Vigilance, and Lifelink this turn. You're going to have to double block him. It's unfortunate for us, actually. I should have probably got rid of the Skyclave. Yeah, it's just an awkward block, isn't it? Okay. So I think I'll take out the Skyclave. I mean, I could save the Core Wizard here, but I think saving Nadar is better. Yeah, I think at this point we've just shut down our Mono White friend. They've still got three cards. Yeah. All going according to plan. We've been going for about an hour here, so I think this is going to be our last one of the evening. And we're presented with a bunch of two drops, and our opponent goes first. The good news is that I like all of these two drops. Our opponent is really in the tank about this mulligan here. Uh, they kept it. Well, let's see, maybe they kept a sketchy one or two land hand and they just uh, end up folding. It's kind of the ideal thing here for us. Unfortunately, without Valentin, Shambling Ghast does shut off the Triumphant Adventure really well. Well, they're finding their land. What 
does Black White have to foretell that isn't called Doomscar? I have no idea. I guess they can foretell the thing that makes angels that I can't remember the name of right now. Let's see if they're looking for treasure. Or not. Okay, so what didn't they foretell? Poison the cup and blood on the snow. Alright. Hopefully remove blood in the snow for the rest of the game. So that's poison the cup. And that's poison the cup. You can't play the same card you just foretold. Although they like both on top, which is rough. Yeah, no, I'm not going to block that. So they're probably playing huge, scary Planeswalkers, but I think keeping them off Lessons is also pretty valuable for us. And we have to just keep playing creatures because they can just poison the cup. So, Trampant Adventure gives our wizard first strike death touch, which is fun. But Shambling Gas then just kills the Triumphant Adventurer when it dies. Ooh, unless we block here. And we trade our two drop. I think trading the wizard for the for the Shambling Gas is actually to our benefit here. They go for the treasure, they just really want blood on the snow. Yeah, I think I'm happy taking that trade. What are they at? Six mana right now? And we made Blood on the Snow cost eight. Wow, I have never seen someone play this card. I was looking at this for this deck, but it just didn't really seem to make sense. The modes are pretty confusing. Although he's got Double Strike, but we're going to have First Touch, Death Touch. First Strike, Death Touch. And Menace, actually, now that I think about it. So let's go grab some Menace. Can they make us sacrifice? They can make us draw a card and lose a life. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature we control. Yeah, I don't quite get this guy. Do we want to go through the tomb? He can attack us for 4. Um, I think we want to race here. Let's go through the tomb. Yes, he has all the abilities. So, let's see. They're on one, two, three, four, five, six mana. They draw a land. Yeah, okay. It's just thinking, what do we do here? And I think we play out the other adventure. They have to give us one of these, and I guess the worst thing they can give us is the 2-1 Black Inkling. No. Alright, so they're just really counting on top decking a land. Um... Is there a point to keeping Hive of the Eye Tyrant back to land to block their Faceless Haven? What are we attacking for? Four, seven, nine, plus uh, four damage. Yeah, I don't think we need to use Hive of the Eye Tyrant here. Oh, does Forsworn Paladin want to attack? I don't think that it does. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Yeah, it's not a good attack. Okay. We're going in with these guys. They don't have a card to discard. 
They do have a land or an artifact to sacrifice. Maybe they'll just sacrifice the Inkling. No. So they're just really counting on finding... Uh, they're just really counting on finding a land, aren't they? I think I should have sent Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Well, actually, even if they find the land... Um... Okay, Shadrix is going to die. I think I want to put them on one here. He's already got Death Touch. Don't worry about that. Really doesn't want to sacrifice the treasure because it means he can't play Blood in the Snow. Ah, but he can sacrifice his blockers that are already just going to die. But Shadrix trades, so probably doesn't want to sacrifice it. Okay, opponent's digging. I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed they're going to find the land here. Well, actually, the treasure, is, the treasure is it. They already found it. Well, those are some pretty good top decks for our opponent. If we went in with the Paladin, we would have had that game. Possible mistake from us. Well, I suppose definite mistake for us. But even Blood on the Snow doesn't save them. Okay. Guess I could have made a treasure. Ooh, does Blood on the Snow save them? Agadim's Awakening gets back... That's funny, if we had an Adar... Actually, no, we never completed the dungeon, did we? Well, let's go for the win. Actually, if they remove it here, we can no longer play Agadim's. And, uh, they only... Oh. oh. Should have taken Shadrix there. Ooh. I see how it is. Alright. You think you've won. That's fine. If they have another blood on the snow, then I guess Shadrix comes back. That was your blocker with the Faceless Haven. You needed that. Okay, our opponent's hanging on. Let's see. I guess they can power up a faceless, but they're probably just going to double link, double block with Shambling Gas, so... I think we want them to do that, because otherwise the Shambling Gas can just take out the Forsworn Paladin. Can correct our mistake familiar. Okay, well, I feel like this game is slipping away from us, even though our opponent is at one here. We still have a couple outs. Yeah. Definitely have misplayed this game.
My opponent's still out of cards. We can still top them all. Even an Adar is pretty scary for them right now because we make a 4-4 death touch. So I was going to say Luminarch has to go in, but I actually don't think Luminarch goes in here because then it makes a ghost form flyer. So Luminarch just stays back. Of course, if they find a way to sacrifice their own Shambling Gas, they get the flyer, but what can we do about that? I guess their play is to exile Shambling Gas themselves. Wow, I felt like we misplayed a lot there, but we managed to eke it through. 